Well, you can see the difference in the uh, size of them, and we all know that more bigger is more better. -er. So uh, I think I'll trust the 290BEX a bit more than this one. Um, this has got multiple primaries, so I think it was it was definitely meant for a higher voltage. Whether that was 220 or 240, we'll find out when we uh, when we well we won't find out because it's going in the bin, mate. But it doesn't matter because we're putting this one in. So rambling, rambling. Focus, Brad. Uh, 290BEX. It's meant for either the Deluxe Reverb, the AB763, the 6.3 volt heater winding has more current capability. So I feel a bit safer putting this one in than uh, just a standard Deluxe, which is only meant for two 12AX7s. The 5 volt winding is the same, 3 amp. Uh, that's only powering the, uh, the, the heaters of the Rectify valve, so big meh there it's got a 50 volt tap which doesn't get used in this application because uh the ab763 is a fixed bias stamp so it uses that for the bias tap but we don't need it we'll just uh tie that off and heat shrink it and this has only got one 240 volt primary so now we've got another problem this fan is a 240 volt fan 220 to 240 volt but they were using the primary of this transformer as a auto transformer and they were connecting this to the 120 volt tap in order to make it operate quieter so what do we do what do we do what do we do do we get a quieter fan do we put this in anyway it's dual ball bearing so it's probably pretty quiet it looks like a quality fan it's got a cast cast aluminium housing uh do we run it at full voltage it's kind of our only option. Um, you can't use droppers or anything because the amount of uh, heat generated would be ridiculous. Um, so either that or get another transformer that's got multiple primaries and do the same thing. But um, we'll see what that sounds like at 240 volts and go from there. Really, it shouldn't be needed. Um, I, I think they were using that to cool this, which was being run over spec and was overheating as a result. So this was like a Band-Aid fix. I mean, did Vibroluxes and stuff have a fan in the back back in 1950, whatever? What do we need it now? I mean, a fan at any speed is still annoying um, if you're recording or it's it's very quiet in the room. I don't know how bass players put up with it, but, you know, they're a special breed. Let's not talk about them. <laughs> I love you, bass players. I love you. Just joking. And well, there's no markings absolutely anywhere on this thing other than uh, the mold markings showing the size of the core, which doesn't really tell us anything, and the marking from the factory. Um, I'm wondering if this might be something European because... Uh, or maybe even Chinese, because the um, screws are metric. Don't know. Not even the bell ha housing has any hints on it, but um, metric screws on an American-made amp. I don't know if anyone uh, can comment as to that or if this transformer looks very familiar to anyone. Just chuck us a little comment down the bottom legend. It's got a uh, logo that looks like it says CVP. Uh, but that's probably just the mold maker, not the uh, whoever wound this thing. Now, me being the sneaky little hoarder that I am, not really, I'm quite the opposite of a hoarder, but I've got one of these uh, cords for these fans. It's like another standard connector. Let's have a listen what it sounds like, because this one soldered inside and stuff. It's all uh, preoccupied, so I'll plug it in. Just have a listen. Bang! Oh, that's not bad at all. Can you even hear that? With the mic next to it? Like, if I put the mic in front of it, it'll, it'll cop the wind from it, surely, but... I think I think that'll be fine, Legends. In fact, it must have barely been spinning before, because that's really not a high-flow fan. Not high-speed or flow. Doesn't say the uh, the rip-ems, but... No, that'll be good at 240 volts. Happy days. It's drawing 8 watts and 40 milliamps. And it's advertised, <laughs> advertised, it's marked, rated at 50 milliamps. So, happy days. Let's uh, just do that. It's easy. You know what? Those nuts are really hard to undo. Because I used Imperial Keps nuts on a fucking metric screw. <laughs> You're losing points rapidly, Lazy J. Fucking lazy's alright. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're Imperial Keps nuts. 
Just check with the thread gauge. <laughs> uh, they're making it too easy for us, champions. You've got to start building some good boutique amps, so I've got nothing to complain about. But I'll shut their channel down if that happens. But I think we both know that's never going to happen, so... <laughs> And might I point out also that using a Keps nut on top of a flat washer completely fucking defeats the purpose of using a Keps nut in the first place. So don't do that because you may as well just use a normal nut. Even a drop of Loctite on a normal nut would be better than that. That's just dumb. Ah, oh, Frenzel Rom's on in the background. I love Frenzel Rom. Um, they got the right idea here. Just a metric screw with a nylock washer. Solid as, bro. Don't know why they do that there and then something completely different on the other end of the bracket. But anyway, I degrees. Now, I would like to see uh, some nicer valve sockets in an amplifier like this. Look at these pissy little foil terminals. You look at them and they break off. And uh, they don't stay where you put them. They sort of, the wire has more influence over them than, than the bend in them. So, I'd like to see something like a, a belton in there with a terminal that's literally like almost a millimetre thick. They're, they're really heavy duty in that. They're like, I don't know, five bucks each or something. This seems like nitpicking until you realise they're asking like eight grand for one of these things. It's just, um, you know, it's very easy to lose sympathy for them when you, when you realise what the asking price of this unit is and you see little cheap shortcuts like that. Yeah, so it looks like those Fender ones from the 70s that I hate where the, the terminal starts way down inside the hole so it only holds on to like the last two or three mil of the pin. Uh, not very well. And it's made from plastic, like I'd like to see Mikkel X or something. It looks just like, um, it looks like PVC actually, but without burning a bit of it, we don't we don't know. But I'd like to see some something uh, a little bit more high quality than this. At least they have used uh, Beltons on the on the preamp end, but in this area it's much less critical. If you're going to use Beltons anywhere, I'd use it for the power and the output. All right, it's it's difficult how to express just how annoying it is having these little hanger-on units where you're trying to work on this thing and flip it over. It's bad enough for the power cord, let alone two extra boxes. Uh, so I put some tape over the uh, bell housing so we don't scratch it. Uh, plugged in the the fan. So let's. Uh, it's actually good because this now clears that. So that's a little added bonus before you turn it over and it's just sitting on there. Uh, so let's flip it over and start wiring this thing up. Oh my god, the boxes! Oh, I'm okay. No, oh, right, champions. We've got the power transformer installed. Uh, probably going to clean up the lead dress a little bit more. I've literally just pressed roll as I uh, soldered the last connection. But I've redone the mains wiring here on the active because the pissy looking red wire that they used before has no printing on it. And when, when cabling's got no printing on it, it generally means, uh, well, it definitely means I've got no idea what the rating is. So I've got this stuff on here, which is mains rated. It's got a non-meltable uh, jacket, which is really nice. You can literally just hold your solder barrel on there and there's nothing happens, which is cool. Um, well, hot. <laughs> All right, so this new Transformers 6.3 volt heater winding doesn't have a center tap, which complicates things a little bit, but for the better. So I've installed two fusible 100 ohm resistors between the cathode and the two heater lines on one of the uh, output valve sockets. And uh, that may reduce noise a little bit further and we've got some free heater elevation there via the cathode. So if you were going to get that mod done to your own amp, um, just remember that there's no point doing it unless you disconnect the, uh, the center tap if the transformer has one. And it may, uh, may offer some improvements in the noise floor. Mm, we should probably do something about this uh, tremolo node filter cap just floating in midair too. Should probably silicon it down to that chassis down the bottom because that will fracture leads uh, being in a combo as well and just, just getting thrown around. Um, so first complication, doing some passive testing, just getting my head around the circuit and what they've done. I've pretty much sketched out everything on here that is uh, in the actual amp in front of me, the changes, the, the, the 
departations, if you will. Is that a word? Lyle, is that a word? English major. Um, from the standard 5A3 circuit. So some of it's for the variable voltage setup. So there's a coupling cap in the input there, and that's... The grid will do weird shit when you change the plate voltage. It will shift in uh, DC level. Uh, it will... Uh, oh, God, I need a thesaurus. <laughs> it will vary around zero according to which way you're taking the voltage for a second there until it stabilizes uh, via the grid leak there as the space charge uh, does things with the things and the stuff. That will put DC on your guitar volume pot or whatever possibly damaging it or at least making it do weird shit so they've got a cap there uh, and they've moved the grid leak from here for that reason to over here so i'd add an actual 12a y7 there uh they've created another node now this is what i'm worried about we'll, we'll go over all the other stuff in a minute uh, all the other stuff that's uh, different to the standard 5a3 but they've created an extra node after this node so here's a phase inverter, here's the previous stage, Dro phase inverter driver, whatever you want to call it, another gain stage. They've put a 1.5k here and another filter cap. However, measuring from this point to this point, I get zero ohms. Uh, so why have they got a resistor there if it's shorted out? Uh, and it's not shorted to ground, it's just shorted to that node. So I'm not sure if there's a DAG or something under the board or if they've put a link under the board unintentionally. That would not create a lot of hassle really it would just be extra filtration on this node but why put a resistor there if it's shorted out so i want to investigate but to do that i'd have to lift the board wouldn't i pain in the ass now this thing would function fine with no extra node i have the feeling that's to reduce noise um but yeah i don't know there's a lot of un unanswered questions i want to find out why that Primarily, I want to find out why that's shorted out, that 1.5k, because it appears that there may be something loose under the board. So looking at the actual unit, here's the PI uh, and the preamp node. You've got your phase inverter plate load there. You've got your phase inverter driver, or the, the previous stage uh, plate load there. Then here's that dropper, a 1.5k. So that should be another node, which then goes to these two plate loads for the first two stages. So you'd imagine that that would be like a dropper to create another node there. But I'm reading zero ohms from here to here and from here to here. So maybe they put a wire from here to here like normal, but then they put another node, but it doesn't go anywhere. Or maybe it goes there as well. Uh, I don't know. Trust me, I really don't want to investigate this because I've got much better shit to do. But zero ohms zero ohms why for so you see over here here's the supply for this node uh, and there's the one prior to it that's the uh the screen node there and then your b plus there so why put that resistor there if it's got something shorting it out let's have a look so i think the easiest way to lift this board not touching that side of it uh is to undo these pots that the jacks see if we can angle it back and lift the board up and just get a glimpse under there with the mirror and see if there's any uh any extra wires there because it just doesn't make sense it's it's not secret tone source it's just it's just illogical um so i think something's wrong you can see here this wire now this this is from a bit of wire underneath it's been folded back on itself uh and it's pointing isn't it directly at this point which is the other node and then you've got a piece of wire here which is pointing directly at this node so maybe they've fucked up and put two links one there and one there and <laughs> defeated the purpose of this resistor now i could easily send this amp on its way after testing of course but without sussing this out because i know the amp would work pretty well perfectly fine without another node there uh but my curiosity's got the best of me and that's probably why i don't make much money here because that's always the case so let's try and make this as painless as possible we'll have a quick look try not to uh disturb too much and uh if that's the case we can cut that second wire and uh it can have its own little node with a ridiculously 
low value 1.5k on it which is silly but um we could always put the wire back later if you know originality is an issue because um that can be a thing all right and sure enough here's the preamp node filter cap as you'd normally find in 5a3 linking up to the uh plate load for the phase inverter in the previous stage uh, normally that wire would go over here and lead to the preamp they've uh, got that resistor on the other side of the board here but they've also got a link wire here with only the finest um, black duct tape that money can buy you know boutique oh 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 look it's uh it's not even a whole wire it's it's uh two that have been soldered together but at least there's a j-hook there why the fuck would you do that i don't know they've just added more filtering to there but they've bypassed that resistor that's really weird uh what do you do here you know will i, will I get accused of uh ruining the the tone hound juice out of this thing by cutting that link and making it actually another node actually as it's built i don't know let's just fucking cut it eh? enough thinking more doing if they want it linked again i'll just put it on top of the board because that's ridiculous why would you bypass a resistor with a wire are they trying to uh mislead people and not see that you know if you if you copy their circuit they can see you because only they are allowed to copy fender <laughs> uh anyway carrying on We'll put this back in. It was good to have a look under anyway. I enjoyed it. Did you? Interestingly, they've put a cut here uh, between the, the one meg, essentially grid leak for the phase inverter and the uh, last high tension. So it must have been getting more leakage or just a precaution against it. But that's still not the greatest length going around it. So you should, I imagine they probably should have taken that a bit further or changed the layout a bit or just not used the stupid fiberboard, gone with fiberglass instead. But then, you know, wouldn't have a vintage cred, would it? So, leakage uh, can be an issue on these. Oh, well, now I've uh, allayed my curiosity. Let's get this monstrosity back together and give it a test. So, I might leave it here, Legends. Uh, in the next one, I'll have it all sitting pretty and back together. If there's any issues, of course, you'll hear about them. <laughs> Who are you watching, right? Um, but, yeah, I'll uh, get it back together, do some testing in the next one. So, thanks for watching, Legends. Uh like and subscribe um, because you know that's what all the cool kids are doing these days I told you this if you're not doing it yet you know I know it's hip to be square but speaking of hip to be square anyone recognize these it's hip to be square anyone for a cigar